guys and welcome back to the platform 2D tutorial series. Um, in this one we are going to do knockback. So if you haven't seen it um, in the last episode, in the beginning I showed you an example of what we are going to do. So yeah, let's jump right into Unity and we're going to open the player script. Um, there we go. Um, oops. There. Um, and so what we are going to do is uh, using something called an IE numerator. So basically what an IE numerator is, is kind of like a normal function, but um, I use it for things that takes time. Um, so we can call it from one frame, like when on collision of, or something that only gets called for one frame. And then start the I enumerator, and then it will run through. And when it is finished, uh, during the things that we put in it, it will end. So um, we're going to do a I enumerator now. So we're going to say public I E numerator numerator. There, and we are going to call this IE numerator a knockback, and it is going to take some things. So, in these parentheses, we're going to say float knock uh, duration, comma float knock back power, and a vector 3, I guess, knock back direction. So this is quite self-explanatory. I'm just going to move down so you can see a little better and zoom in. Oh, I always forget forgets this. Oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> so knock duration is uh, how long we are going to add the force for the knock back. So Actually, how the way we're going to do the knockback is basically by adding some force to the player. So knockback uh, duration is for how long we're going to add a force. Knockback power is obviously the power of the knockback, and knockback direction is the direction that we're going to add the knockback. I'm not sure if we're going to need this, but uh, let's see. So, um. The first thing we are going to say is um, float time timer, <laughs> which is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to use this to count the time that has gone since we started this function or called it. So we're going to say while knock duration is greater than timer. Um, then we want to increase the timer by time dot delta time. So this just counts in seconds. It increases the timer for the seconds that has passed. Um, so then we're going to say, um, what are we going to say here? Uh, RB two D dot add force. Um, hmm. Let's say new vector three knock back there, which is this here dot x times minus hundred. I found this good. Uh, basically, this does so when we get knocked back, we're going to get knocked back the uh, opposite way that we are heading on the x axis. So for the y, we're going to say knock back there. Dot y. Oh, where was I? Um, I just got interrupted. So, uh, hmm, knock back there. Dot y. Uh, we're just going to say times knock back power. And then uh, transform dot position. Why is it saying capital T? It always does that. Transform position dot c because we don't want to change 
the C axis when we add the knockback because we ain't using the C axis in 2D games. So what we are doing here is um, uh, saying knockback there dot x times minus hundred because we want to kinda when we get knockback get knocked the opposite way we are heading and knockback there with dot y times knockback power is because we want to get knocked up in the air. So the knock uh, knockback power is for the y axis and then we are going to say yield return zero. All right. So what this does is, um, in an IE numerator, you have to yield uh, return something. So when we end this, when this while loop has finished, when this condition has has been met, um, isn't isn't true anymore. Then we want to stop the uh, the IE numerator or finish it. So, yeah, I guess that explains it. If you don't understand the IE numerator thing, then I would suggest you uh, go onto the Unity website and look up the scripting API or the uh, tutorials they have. They are really good, actually. Um, quite informative, some of them. So, um, yeah, now we are going to do so we can call this function. So, um, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a little bit sick, but, um, so yeah, in the spike, uh, script, when we get into the trigger, we want to add the knockback, right? So the way we are going to do that is by saying start coroutine. And then we're going to say player, uh, which is this uh, variable right here, dot knockback. And that is going to take these that we input here. So um, we are starting this. Instead of saying uh, just like a normal function, uh, knock player that knock back like this. We are saying start curtain because that is the only way you can. <coughs> oh my God! Excuse me. That is the only way you can uh, start a I E numerator curtain function. So start curtain player that knock back, and that is going to take some stuff that we made. So we are going to say. Hmm, the time it takes for the knockback, I guess 0 0.02 seconds. So it is a really short time we're going to get knocked back. And the knockback power, 350. Let's just try with that. And um, for the last uh, there, we're just going to say, you know what? We don't actually need this, I guess. Maybe we do. Oh. Never mind. Let's just say player dot transform dot position. Um, so we're just giving the position of the player. Um, so we ain't really using this as a direction, just as a position. We can add some force to. So yeah. So let's see if this works. So I'm just going to quickly run down what we have done. So yeah, we created our i numerator, and while the knock duration du duration is bigger than the timer, which is this one we created here, and the timer is increasing here, so when this condition is met, it it will finish, and when it uh, isn't, oh, what am I saying? Yeah, when this condition isn't uh, isn't is false when timer is actually bigger than knock duration then we will stop the IE numerator and while this is true we are adding the force for knockback so and then we are calling the function when we hit the trigger of a spike so yeah 
we're actually also going to use this knockback for other things like when we touch an enemy or when we get hit by a bullet or something in our game. So yeah, let's go into Unity and see if we get any damn errors. Nope, there wasn't anything. Let's play. Oh yeah, it works. But I forgot something. Um, I forgot to do the uh, red flash thing, so we are going to do that now. Um, so yeah, the knockback works, The we lose our health, we die, and everything is nice. So, for the red flash, we are going to create an animation. So yeah, you can actually create animations that changes some values, like the color. So, we are going to add a new component and call this animation. And that is because we, uh, we don't want... Hmm, how can I explain this? You can see later when we actually do it in the code. So we are going to add this component and we are going to create a new animation. And in the animation folder and let's name this uh, red flash. Yeah. And for the first, um, you can see it added a keyframe when we when we actually press the record button and change the value up here. So we are going to start out with the white color and then we are going to move one frame like this and just, um, and change the color to red and then one frame again and change this to white and red again and then white just going to play it and it is truly really fast so we're going to slow it down maybe 15 yeah this looks fine actually so yeah now we have this animation and we can actually play this animation by saying something simple in our code so just going to do that in a second so go to the animation component and set the size to 1 because we're going to add the animation we just created so drag the player underscore red flash to the animation clip thing and just put that here. Ah, oh, oops. Um, player automatically should be ticked off because we don't want our player to flash red when we just start the game. So um, let's get into our script. Uh, we, let's go into a player script and to our damage script. So we are going to play that animation when we are getting damaged. So we are going to say, actually, hmm, yeah, we're going to say uh, game object dot get component animation, and then we're going to say uh, say dot whoops dot play. And the name of the animation, what was the name actually? It was player underscore red flash player underscore red. So yeah, what we're doing here is getting the component which is called animation, which is this. And then we are saying it should play the animation called player underscore red flash, which is the one we just created. So yeah, now when we go into our code and press play and jump onto a spike, nothing happens. Hmm, why is this? Maybe the fix is by marking this legacy. Wait a second. Yeah, okay, so what I just did there was, uh, that was pretty quick, so there's a fix for this. This sometimes happens for me. So uh, when you click on this animation clip right here and go up to this thing right here and click debug, then you have to mark this as legacy for some reason. Um, I don't really know why, but this fixes the problem. 
So let's play, pre press play again and jump on our spike. And you can see flashes red. Amazing. That is amazing. And then when we hit these spikes, we can jump off. Whoa. <laughs> awesome. So that is some basic knockback for our spikes and basic red flash for a player when we get damaged. And that is basically the ending of this tutorial. So thank you for watching guys. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, like, dislike if you disliked it. If you have any problems, comment. Um, thank you for watching guys. Goodbye.